in my career. This is Shiva from the Department of Meteorology and Oceanography, Andhra University. So in this video, we are going to discuss about the uh, difference between the characteristics of Western and Eastern boundary currents. But before going to that, uh, please make sure that you have watched the videos on Ocean Currents Part 1 and 2 before go ahead with the Part 3. Uh, because uh, for suppose if you are not aware of uh, the terms like uh, what is the ocean current and how does it form and uh, uh, like what are all these different terms like uh, western and eastern boundary currents and all it's quite difficult for you to understand what exactly I'm talking about so and in this in this case I just suggest you just just get back once uh, to part one and two videos and have a quick recap what I have learned there and come to the three okay so don't get worry i too will have a quick recap what i have learned in uh, ocean guns part one and two and then uh, we'll go through one by one very quickly so we have learned that uh, what are the ocean currents means there we have defined what are the ocean currents right of course it's nothing but uh, permanent streams of water uh, which flow from one one part of the ocean to another part of the ocean uh, in definite path and direction right so we also learned that uh, how do they form like how do ocean currents form of course, because of this uh, uh, unequal heating over the sea surface, which causes the winds, again, when, which in turn, these winds form these convection currents, right? So, but here, one of, one, one of the important points to be noted that uh, friction between the ocean and the atmosphere, right? So, uh, do you think that uh, without uh, friction, uh, does uh, wind itself uh, will able to form all the uh, waves currents over the ocean? No, not at all, right? So, when there is a, uh, a disturbing force such as a wind and as well as the friction between the ocean and the atmosphere, then only the disturbing force could produce all the waves and ocean, I mean waves and currents and uh, etc. over the sea surface, right? So we also learned that type of current, like uh, types of ocean currents based on two classifications such as uh, source of origin as well as the currents motion, right? So based on the source of motion, source of origin, uh, we have two types of ocean currents such as uh, wind driven or surface currents or density driven and uh, density driven or uh, subsurface currents right so coming to the based on uh, currents motion again we have two types that are uh, western boundary or warm currents and eastern boundary or cold currents okay so uh, and what else we have learned like we have learned also that uh, why should we study means what is the significance of studying of ocean currents like uh, of course to understand the global ocean circulation, climate change, navigation, etc. So, of course, so we have a wide range of applications in studying of all these uh, uh, ocean currents. And we also studied some factors which affect the ocean currents, like topography, temperature, salinity, corallus force and all. Uh, these are all the few topics we have very clearly studied in our ocean currents part one. And coming to the part two, we have studied all major ocean currents from the all three major oceans, such as the Pacific, Atlantic and the Indian Ocean. So there you can find one nice table in which you will get in detail information about each and every uh, individual um, uh, current from the all three major oceans, right? So these are all the topics we have clearly studied in our Ocean Currents Part 1 and 2. But uh, this video, in this video, we are restricting our concern, main focus on uh, especially on Western boundary or Eastern boundary currents and their characteristics and how their characteristics are different with each other right so before that uh, before going to that first we uh, uh, let's uh, define what exactly the western boundary currents like how it gets its name if you see very carefully the name itself like western boundary currents the name itself says that okay western boundary currents or something uh, which deals with the uh, western boundary of the ocean similarly eastern boundary currents are the something which deals with the uh, eastern boundary of the ocean right so if you think in such a way, uh, imagine how can we define these western boundary currents? Means what are the possible ways we, in which we can define uh, western? What are the western boundary currents? Oh, right. So, for, for suppose if somebody, uh, if you ask someone, what are the western boundary currents? He may replies like ocean surface currents which move from the equator to pole, right? So again, one more another person, if you ask him another person, he may say like this also, like ocean eastern boundary currents are nothing but the ocean surface currents which move from the low latitudes to high latitudes, right? And again, uh, if he ask one more person again, he says like, he replies like, uh, he may replies like ocean surface currents which carry the warm water from warmer regions to the colder regions, right? So like that, uh, again, if you ask one more person or he may simply say like, okay, what are the western, western boundary currents means, okay? Uh, warm currents are nothing but western boundary currents, right? So 
these are the possible ways in which we can define uh, western boundary currents because in all of these uh, ways the uh, meaning remains con uh, same like uh, if i say current moves from the equator to pole or uh, from it, it also same like from low latitudes to high latitudes it also same like uh, from warmer water regions to colder water region when i say from equator to pole or low latitudes to high latitudes or from warm water regions to colder water regions the meaning remains same that's why in these many ways we can define this western boundary currents like this right so in the same fashion we can also define this uh, eastern boundary currents as well but uh, these are quite opposite to the western boundary currents so this is how uh, if we, we we can uh, define the western and eastern boundary currents of course the here we are here the, there are few examples uh, uh, given for this western boundary current such as gulf stream and aglas uh, as well as for the um, west eastern boundary currents a peru current and bengalia current are given as examples so uh, for more examples we just get back to video, ocean currents part 2 there you can get all, all the different different kinds of uh, warm and cold currents from all three major oceans right so if you are once okay with this uh, defining the western boundary current and eastern boundary current so we are good to go to our main concern of this today's uh, video that is characteristics of western and eastern boundary currents so this is a table which i made uh, clearly shows you what are the different features of the western and eastern boundary currents in a first column of this table that's uh like uh, features like width depth speed volume transport like this so the corresponding values of these features for the western boundary current are given in second column and similarly uh for uh, um, eastern boundary currents are given in third column right so we'll start one by one feature like how it looks and how it is uh, different uh, with each other now these features are uh, different with each other we'll see so coming to the first feature that is a width means what it says like with what width the current flows right so in case of western boundary current uh, width is narrow that means usually less than uh, 100 kilometers right but in case of ebc uh, uh, the width is very wider it's it can be up to 1000 kilometers so this if you see the arrow length of the arrow uh, you can understand like how it is different like the, here the length of the arrow is a little bit bigger than this right so in terms of width uh, we can say western boundary currents are narrow in nature and uh, eastern boundary currents are wider in nature right so coming to the next feature that is the depth so what it tells what depth uh, tells is uh, uh, with what vertical depths the current flows okay so in case of western boundary currents uh, depths are very deeper means uh, with vertical depths uh, with deeper vertical depths the current flows that's up to 2 kilometers Uh, but in case of eastern boundary currents the depths are very shallow like uh, these uh, the currents with which the vertical flow vertical uh, depths they flow that's hardly about uh, 0.5 kilometers right so in case of depth feature we can say western boundary currents are the deeper in nature and uh, eastern boundary currents are shallow in nature right and similarly uh, coming to the speed means with what speed the current moves right so generally it is represented by the arrow symbol so as the length of the arrow increases that is mean a speed increases right so uh, in case of speed we can define like uh, wbc are faster in nature uh, and that is uh, up to hundreds of kilometers for a day that means the uh, current can travel uh, hundreds of kilometers within a day right so uh, but in case of ebc the speed of the current is little bit slow or sluggish that means uh, they could only travel few tens of kilometers per day so so in terms of speed we can say that western boundary currents are faster in nature and the eastern boundary currents are slow or sluggish in nature right and coming to the uh, next feature that is the volume transport volume transport means uh, how much amount of the volume of water uh, that is being transported by a current as it is moving from one place of the ocean to another place right so it's the, the unit for this volume transport is a sfedra means it's a, it's a name of a scientist uh, who has done a lot of research in uh, ocean circulation so uh, the one sfedra is equivalent to the 1 million cubic meters of volume of water per 1 second that means see in terms of volume transport if you see for the western boundary currents that uh, <clears throat> in case of wbc uh volume transport is little bit large 
as much as 100 sort of reps. But in case of EBC, a volume transport is very small, like uh, typically from 10 to 15 sweat reps. Okay. So that means uh, if I say the uh, volume transport of the current is 100 sweat reps, that you should understand that the, that the current can transport can transport the 100 million cubic meters of volume of water for one second. Right. So and coming to the next feature, that is the temperature. Of course, obviously, we know already that western boundary currents are, are also called as warm currents. Similarly, eastern boundary currents are also called as cold currents, right? So from, uh, from this, we can uh, very clearly know that uh, western boundary currents are uh, generally uh, high in temperatures. I mean, uh, they uh, and similarly, in case of eastern boundary currents are generally uh, cooler in uh, nature. Like the um, temperature of this western boundary currents are warmer a little bit and the temperature of this uh, eastern boundary currents are cooler right that's why we name them like a warm and cool currents cold currents okay so because of presence of these uh, uh, warm and cold currents on the western and eastern boundary of the oceans respectively we see some another phenomena that's what we call it as uh, grasslands and deserts right like uh, see uh, generally uh, as we already know that uh, warm currents and as well as the cold currents form the grasslands and deserts respectively how see for example on the western boundary of the ocean we have some uh, uh, warm currents what do they do generally um, since the uh, temperatures are warmer they uh, uh, transport the huge amount of they mean they supplies the huge amount of the uh, moisture into the overlying atmospheric column so when these uh, moisture laden winds uh, um, goes uh, uh, i mean uh, uh, um, prevail over the surrounding land mass uh, they will condense and uh, gives the huge amount of the rainfall and in, i mean they condense and gives the huge amount of rainfall over the surrounding land mass so that uh, thereby you can see some grasslands such as pampas and downs right see uh, similarly on the other hand since they are uh, the temperatures like eastern boundary currents temperatures are cooler in nature they will not be able to uh, supply that much uh, huge amount of the uh, moisture in the overlying air column so that the when the air moves or uh, flows on the surrounding land uh, land mass so uh, generally there is if there is no such a uh, such a huge amount enough amount of the moisture so the uh, air or winds become dry thereby we can get the surrounding uh, uh, land mass uh, becomes like a drier so obviously uh, <clears throat> ultimately we can see some uh, phenomena called like a deserts so this is one of the example namib and because of the presence of the Bengalia current, we see uh, Namib, des uh, Namib desert, right? These have uh, warm presence of the warm currents and cold currents uh, uh, forms the grasslands and uh, deserts respectively. Okay, and come to the upwelling in, an oce in oceanography, I can say that upwelling is, uh, uh, in simple terms, I can say it's a phenomena uh, in which the subsurface water comes to the surface when there is a wind which is prevailing over the sea surface, right? So, uh, in terms of upwelling, in case uh, for WBC, uh, there is very little and no upwelling. But in case of EBC, upwelling is common, especially coastal upwelling. So, I can say one example for the one of the major coastal upwelling zones uh, throughout the globe is uh, Peru uh, coastal upwelling region. Along the um, because of the presence of the cold current called Peru, there is a, a huge amount of the I mean this that that it, it forms the one of the uh, uh, major upwelling zones in the uh, globe, right? That's what we call the Peru coastal upwelling zone. And finally, a few examples are given here for the both western boundary currents and eastern boundary currents. Uh, Gulf Stream, Brazil, Croatia, Aglas, and Levin currents for, are the few examples for WBC. Similarly, Peru, Canary, Bangalore, California, and Western West Australian currents are the few examples for the east boundary currents, eastern boundary currents, right? So, and one more note here to remind that uh, Levian current, Levian current is a warm current, but only difference in this current is it doesn't flow along the western boundary of the uh, ocean. Instead, it move, it flows along the eastern boundary of the ocean. Where exactly, if you ask me, uh, Levian current uh, that moves from the equator to pole, but it moves on the it moves along the eastern side of the southern Indian Ocean, that is the west coast of Australia. Okay. So, if you once understand what are all these different characteristics of western and eastern boundary currents and how they are different with each other, 
so then uh, you may ask me like uh, what is the point what is the point to study all these characteristics and how they are different with each other in such a detailed manner why what's the point to study all this then here is a two questions for you to uh, understand why to study about all these western and eastern boundary currents and the characteristics and differences between them all this see uh, here are the two questions i have left for you to understand and think uh, by the end of this video so th those are the why are the western boundary currents faster deeper and uh, uh, narrower than abc if you carefully observe in the last table you might have already noticed that some of you uh, western boundary currents are narrower deeper and faster than eastern boundary currents this is what the question is why are the ebc faster deeper and narrower than the ebc wbc sorry why are the western boundary currents faster deeper and narrower than eastern boundary currents right and coming to the second question uh, why is the center of rotation of a gyre also close to the western side of the gyre so don't get worried what is gyre and all how it is formed i will let you know in my further videos in a detailed manner but as of now you can, i can say gyre is nothing but uh, one kind of huge uh, a large circular motion takes place over the sea by the combination of both these uh, warm and cold currents see somewhat somewhat it looks like this see this is a one kind of large uh, circular motion uh, made by the combination of the pair of two warm currents as well as pair of cold currents like by combining two warm currents and uh, combining two cold currents you can see a large circular motion uh, like this so when of course we, as we are saying like this kind this is on kind of large circular motion of course it will have some uh, center of rotation so for example if it is a gyre it looks like in a, uh, uh, seems like a uh, circular motion of course it will have some center of rotation right so if it is there and if it is the center of rotation of the gyre why is the center of rotation of gyre also close to the western side of the uh, gyre or else western side of i mean uh, close to the western boundary currents these are the two different questions i uh, like uh, if you once have a conscious on what you have learned so far and if you are trying to answer these two questions one concept may comes into your mind that is nothing but westward intensification right so what is this exactly what does it mean westward intensification means what something which is intensifying on the westward side right this is what name itself says that westward intensification let us see for example kuroshio current in the western pacific ocean see this is the kuroshio current on the western pacific ocean is around 15 times faster 20 times narrower and 5 times deeper than california current in the eastern pacific ocean this is somewhat here behind this image you might see so this is what what it tells like something which is on the western side of the ocean like a kuroshio current is intensified than the eastern side of the ocean can we call it as like a westward intensification of course yes right so but don't get worry you just have a, a think an idea on what all these questions how uh, means while trying to get the answer to for these two questions you will be able to understand that okay in the westward intensification the topic of or concept of westward intensification Uh, arises in your mind and how it is and why does it form what are the factors to form this uh, uh, happen uh, this westward intensification and all you might think so in our uh, further videos i will clearly will have uh, a clear cut discussion on this what is westward intensification how it forms and because of which it forms like that but for you uh, for an instant of this time i will say an, an answer in a short manner like uh, uh, because of which this westward intensification happening i can say that uh, because of one parametric so, um, called that is the coriolis force right because of the presence of the coriolis force due to the rotation of earth we get this kind of westward intensification but don't get worry i will say in detail manner why is that coriolis force how it affects and uh, manifests this uh, uh, westward topic topic called westward intensification and all we'll have a, a clear cut discussion uh, in our further videos right hope you understand and uh, please leave your comment if you have any doubt Um, while trying to get the answers for these two questions thank you all